Hello and welcome again to Charles Kelly Money Tips. Uh, today I want to talk about education and the gift of education uh, some people might say is the the greatest thing you can give to your children or your grandchildren. It's the old you know teach someone how to fish and you'll feed them for life rather than giving them a fish etc etc. Uh, however the cost of sending a child or grandchild to, a, to an independent or private school sometimes confusingly also known in the UK as a public school. You say, I'm sending my kids to public school. It, it often means a private school. Don't ask me to explain that. It's just the English language. Uh, now, the cost of this is a, so, has, has really risen well above the, the rate of inflation. Um, and yet the number of UK school, UK pupils in, in private education is actually higher than ever. Uh, now, why is this? Now, part of the answer could be you know, better economy, etc. But another... Uh, um, answer for this is that more than one billion pounds a year is is put is, is available in financial assistance for for parents to send children to private schools now you, you may not realize that um, let me just explain that again that uh, although private schools are uh, fee paying schools so you, you you're not it's not a state school paid for by the state and yet there is financial assistance available to to parents to send their, their, their children to private school. So in other words, um, if, if the parent can't afford the, the fees to, at private school, and I'll explain some of, the, some of these fees and how much they are, um, then they can get financial assistance in the form of bursaries or assisted places. Now, school fees have become a big problem for the middle classes in recent years. Now, the middle classes traditionally would save uh, in, in things like ISAs and endowment policies to send children to, to private schools and grandparents would do the same. But in some cases, the, the, the cost of these schools have gone beyond even what they're, they're, they're capable of paying. Uh, that part of this is rising costs. Part of it is in competition from overseas students coming here to, to the top private schools. And, and perhaps that's pushing out the middle classes. I, I don't know. But the cost of, of, of private education is now 50% higher than it was 10 years ago. OK, so that's, that's quite a big jump. And it was already, you know, high then. Uh, I, I sent my kids to, to private schools. It was quite high years and years ago, but it's gone up and up and up. Now, average fees now for day pupils, meaning they just go there for day and come home at night, are nearly four thousand eight hundred a term. That's let's call it five thousand a year. Then you've got other costs of uniforms and various things. You know, you could be talking about five six thousand a year, but. At, um, sorry, that per term rather, and, and over the year, that's around fourteen to fifteen thousand pounds per per year. Okay, now that's net income. So that means you've got to earn a gross income before tax of, of probably in the twenty odd thousand re region before you, you would have the net income to send your your child to a private school. So, put another way, uh, you know if you. 20,000 of your income is per child is going to go on, on just sending your, your child to a, to a local uh, day school, day, day independent school. And this is not going to be Eton or Harrow. You know, the, the, this is just a, a normal sort of independent school. OK, now fees are higher, obviously, in the south east in London. Now, boarding fees, where you'd send your child to a boarding school, uh, now averages uh, £13,000 per term. OK, I mean, 40,000 pounds a year is, is a lot of money. Um, you know, someone's going to have to earn to, to net 40,000, 60, 70,000 a year, you know, to pay that out of out of income. Uh, and that's according to the ISC, uh, which, which is an organization that helps and advises parents. OK, now, uh, um, so what, what can you do about this? Now, the, the, the help available is, is called scholarships and bursaries have become a key factor in affordability. Many parents are not aware of the level of help available because they think, well, I, I'm not on low incomes. I, I'm, I'm on a reasonable kind of income. Um, but in fact, in some cases, even a household income of 90,000 would still qualify them for some help. And also competition for the brightest kids means that some schools are, are looking for what, what they might call needs blind basis uh, kids or children with a flair for things like music or, or sport or art because they, they want to, you know, the competition for the brightest children is, is high and private schools and, 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 and independent schools want to excel 
in things like music and the arts and sport as well as academia. Now my son won a music scholarship and a bursary which covered part of the fees and then there was a, a sort of government sponsored assisted place at that time. Now these were later abolished by the, the Tony Blair Labour government. Um, even though Tony Blair himself had, had actually had a private education, Jeremy Corbyn's had a private education, Diane Abbott sent her children, her, her son, to a private school, uh, even though they believe in state education and that they want to try and make it more difficult now for, for independent schools by taking away their VAT free status and, and taking away their charitable status in terms of council tax and that sort of thing. So um, it's, it's, it's not really fair. I think parents who struggle to send their children to, to, to independent schools actually are helping the state because they're taking that child out of the state system. They don't get any benefit for that. They don't get any refund, refund uh, on the sort of four or five thousand pounds a year it costs a child to cost the state to send their children to a state school. So, in other words, if you send your child to a local state school, it's probably costing five thousand pounds a year to the taxpayer. Now, if you take that child out of that system and send them to an independent school and pay the fees yourself, you know what benefit do you get? You don't get that money back. Um, you don't even get any tax relief. And now. A, a Labour government wants to sort of make it even more difficult by taking away the VAT free status of, of these independent schools. So parents would have to pay VAT on top of the fees, possibly another 20 percent. And that just doesn't make sense. It's like dragging everyone down to the same level. Anyway, that's my little rant of the day. Now, to get to get these uh, places, you, you'd have to go through an application criteria. It could be quite strict. Um, it it, it you know, you need to disclose everything to, to get these. And, um, uh, you know, and obviously they're not going to give uh, usually the, these these assisted places and bursaries to parents who might sort of have a low income, but then they own uh, second properties and buy to let uh, investments and that sort of thing. So they're going to look in and dig into everything. Um, and, and and that's only right. They, they want to uh, make these these bursaries available to the right right parents. Um, now pressure on independent schools have also made it, uh, you know, they're looking at giving away money because they're, 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 most of them are set up as a charity or they've got charitable status and therefore they, they want to show that they are actually charitable and, and giving scholarships and bursaries away to, to children. Now the ISC said that 900 million of the 1 billion provided in, in, in fee assistance last year came directly from the schools themselves. There are other foundations set up by very wealthy people who, 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 who give money to, to, to needy families who've got bright children that want to go to, to top schools. Uh, now, the, um, just, over, uh, just get, give me some numbers here. 175,000 uh, students benefit from some form of free, free fee reduction, not maybe not all the fees, but some form of fee reduction, about half of these through means testing. The number of people receiving free places where all the fees are paid uh, now number more than 6,000 pupils, a 5% e increase every year. Parents of children to, to win a scholarship might also uh, apply for a bursary, often referred to as an assisted place. So you could get a scholarship for a school based on academic um, or artistic ability, as my son got a scholarship based on his music ability, but we also had an assisted place as well, or a type of a bursary as well. So that covered most of the fees. Now, in addition to help helping with, with school fees, further payments could be provided towards the cost of these expensive uniforms and equipment. You know, when you go to these schools, you can't just buy your uniform down at Asda. You know, you've got to go to a specialist shop and buy the one with the badge embroidered and... and you know, cricket gear and football gear, and it goes on and on, believe me. Um, and so, so, some, so there might be some cost towards that provided. Uh, the vast majority of this kind of financial assistance is directed at UK families. Um, but, you know, parents may not know that these things are uh, available. Now, in, in the Financial Times this weekend, there, were, there was uh, an article from the Independent Education Consultants, which advises parents on choosing uh, you know, the right schools and finding bursaries. And she said that parents are not always aware of, of these bursaries and assisted places. So you know, I, I would look into that if you're a parent and you've got 
children you want to send them to a private school I, I would definitely uh, look into that as soon as possible so that you can you can get on 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 this ladder I, I think it's certainly worth it it did help my 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 two children um, get get a high standard of education particularly in the, the the traditional three hours of reading writing and arithmetic it gave them a sort of a discipline to be able to cope with a lot of work they were getting homework from almost when the, the first day they went to school they were brought back they come back with a little assignment to do it might have taken 10 minutes but the homework was always there and it built up and built up and also you've got to remember that you might have to sit uh, uh, entrance tests for these schools so many of the middle class parents send their children to out of uh, hours cramming schools and evening and weekend cramming schools because the competition is is quite fierce even just to get your child into a private school or into a, a good grammar school you know you you've got to work hard you and it, and it's down to the parents as well as the child you know the parents pushing their children working with them driving them around to schools uh, after you know to these cramming schools after hours uh, instead of just watching tv at home and uh, you know i i've seen a lot of parents one, one of a, um, a a couple that uh, a, a lady that worked for us many years ago had got her children into Harrow on, on, on a bursary and a scholarship and she was from an ordinary family. Um, the, her parents actually came from East Africa. They were kicked out of East Africa by Idi Amin. They set up a small business. Uh, they, they were not wealthy people and she was not wealthy herself but they, they, did, they worked hard and you know, outst- I mean, the boy's outstanding. He got into Harrow School uh, the school where I, b- I believe Winston Churchill went, a, a fantastic school. So it can be done. And I, I see many migrant families working towards this, actually. They, they, they tend to push their children a little bit harder. And uh, I, I've seen this a lot in, in migrant families where, you know, they will work hard and, and dig out. I mean, it takes a lot of work. You've got to go around to schools. You've got to find out what bursary is available. You've got to apply on websites. So it does take work. But I think it, it is... Uh, it is worth it. And you'd be surprised at the schools that, that help here. Latimer School in West London, Westminster School, founded in 1560, uh, got its royal charter from Elizabeth I for offering offering help to 40, 40 poor scholars. And there are lots of other uh, um, organisations that also provide help. You've got to do your research. You've got to dig this out. Um, Harrow School is mentioned here uh, that... Uh, if, if you've lived in certain boroughs, you may be able to get help from the John Lyons Foundation. John Lyons was a, a, a former businessman, very wealthy. And all over the country, there are different schools that have different schemes available for, um, for, for local people in, in their area. Now, Eton is, is one of the top schools in the country. You know, the royal family traditionally sent their, their children there. William, Prince William and Harry went there. Now, they spend five and a half million a year to support 273 of its 1,300 pupils. The, the average bursary covers two thirds of the school fees. And they say we're proud of our bursary uh, and scholarship provision, which last year saw 74 boys receiving 100 percent fee remission and a further 208 boys receiving a large a, a range of financial assistance, says the college. Eton hopes, hopes to support one in four pupils in the future and is able to fund this from the school's own resources and donations from powerful its powerful network of alumni. These are former uh, pupils that may have donated money to, to Eton School or Eton College. And there's an example here of a, a son of a Windsor pharmacist who won a scholarship to pay the full boarding fees for the schools. Now, bear in mind, this is is, is, like, is like worth 40,000 a year. You know, over five years, that's 200,000 pounds. And his father said that uh, the applying for the scholarship was quite easy. The information was there on Eaton's website. Um, and, you know, th- there were lots of uh, children sitting for the scholarship test. I think there were around 200 children sitting for the, for the, for the test. So it's not something where... You only get a, you just walk in. You have to do a test, and uh, then they they had maybe ten children called back for a, for a discussion, and then he he was chosen for this scholarship. It was quite a tough process, but you know it, what did he do? He got 
all A stars um, in grades and everything, plus a, sc a clutch of awards and went on to read English at Cambridge. So it is worth it, but it takes work. And I'm sure that they would have schooled their, their son at uh, after school cramming schools to, to learn how to sit tests. And there are schools, uh, little organisations that will help you pass tests for grammar schools and uh, for, for private schools to get them in. My, my son certainly had to sit these tests as well. And, you know, they're not easy. They're, they're, they're like a uh, an IQ test. And at the age of 11, it, it's tough. There's a lot of pressure on the kids at, at that age. Um, but, you know, it's worth it in the long run. It, there's nothing better than a good education that you, that you can give your, your children, you know, other than food and love and things like that. But education is something that can live with them forever. So, so that's, that's all I can say about the schools. Don't... Uh, this is a good money tip here because it could save you hundreds of thousands of pounds if you if you want a scholarship and a lot of people are not aware of it so so go out and find out about this and and see if, if you can do something for your children or maybe even your grandchildren or or your nieces and nephews because they, they are available my, my sister actually uh, got an assisted place for her two boys at a, at a very good school in in west london and she was a single mum at the time and you know i i you know, living in, a, in in London, in Camden, when it wasn't uh, a, a very trendy area in those days. And I know that getting that assisted place to that school probably saved those 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 kids from maybe getting in with the wrong crowd. And men, some of their friends they grew up with ended up in prison and on drugs. But by them getting that assisted place and getting out of the area and getting that, that, that better education, they've gone on to do great things. Um, one is actually teaching now. In, in a school and, and, the, and the other is, is an accountant so they, they've done very very well and uh, you know, credit to my sister for, for digging out that information and getting that that assisted assisted place and uh, so that's great the other thing that that you can do to get a better education for children is to move to, to a better area where you've got a good catchment area of schools but this is where the middle classes win because they can afford to move to, to areas where there are better schools in the catchment area but a lot of people can't afford to do that. My sister was in that position as well. However, at the same time, um, they're, they're, one of her boys was the same age as Tony Blair's son. I think it was Ewan Blair. And Tony Blair uh, at that time lived in Islington. Now, the schools, the state schools in Islington were not very good. So he got a place for his child in Brompton Oratory, which was miles away from where he lived. Um, but th this is how they get round things. Brompton Oratory is not exactly a private school, but it's like a selective uh, school and you know this is how politicians get get around these things and th they say to you no you must have the same state education as everybody else but it's more like a do it do as I say not as I do situation so so that's my little rant on schools good luck with that uh, my, my word of the day is hedge fund now we, we often talk about hedge funds but a lot of people are not sure what exactly a hedge fund is well it, it is a, a collective fund like a a mutual fund or a unit trust it's a, it's a it's a fund where people collectively put money in and the managers manage it but the the hedge fund is usually set up as an official partnership of investments who pull money together to be guided by a professional management team uh, a little bit like a mutual fund or or a, a unit trust but unit trusts and mutual funds are more restricted on what they can invest into like a unit trust would usually be just investing in 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 shares or uh, and they have to invest all of the money in the shares. They can't just sit on the money. So there are different rules for them. Uh, but the investment purpose is to maximise returns. But they may use different strategies. They may borrow money. They may go short and long on stocks. Uh, hedge fund raises money from outside investors and then invests them according to whatever strategy they have promised to, to, to use. Um, there are hedge funds in, in who specialise in long equities, meaning that they will only buy stock, common stock, equities, shares, and never sell short. There are hedge funds which uh, engage in private equity, which means buying uh, small firms in their entirety and then taking them through to, a, to initial public offering. Um, there, there are hedge funds offering uh, who just specialise in property and real estate. Even hedge funds who specialise in buying certain unusual asset classes like patents and music rights. In other words, unlike these mutual funds and unit trusts, they can just about invest in anything. So uh, that, that's, that's really the definition of a hedge fund. Some have done very, very well. 
um, they usually have higher charges as well so that's all for now thanks for everyone who joined me on on facebook live and uh I, I, and please tune into my money tips podcast i put a blog on there as well on the money tips podcast uh, about the the private school bursaries and, and assisted places so that'll be on my my website later on and that you can find that at moneytipsdaily.com so thanks for listening this is charles Kelly bringing you money tips to help you save earn invest accumulate and enjoy more money have a great weekend wherever you are